Hey everyone, uh, thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you are new to my channel, my name is Kiki and I am the founder and creative director for Fedos Creative Designs. And today I'm gonna tell you how to choose your art for a gallery wall. So if you aren't already subscribed to my channel, please do so now and ring that bell. That way you can get notifications of when I post a new video. Um, so if you'd like to hear about what to choose for your gallery wall, then just keep on watching. That was cheesy. Okay, so let's jump right in. Tip number one I have for you is you actually are the creator or chooser of the art. Don't let anybody tell you what to choose or what to put on your own wall. Um, a lot of you may not know, but I actually am an artist. I was born that way, I guess. Um, I went to classes to kind of um, develop more, more of my craft, but I actually do paint um, on regular as my hobby. I don't really sell anything or anything like that. I put it up in my house, that's about it. But it's not my job to tell you what art is. Art is in the eye of the beholder, just like beauty. So you don't want to let anybody tell you like, oh, put this on your wall because it's art. Well, if you really think about it, anything people say can be art, right? I mean, it's just, and like I said, the art is in the eye of the beholder. So, you know, if you want to put a T-Rex on your wall, then then you find that as art. There, it's not my place to tell you that's not art just because I don't like T-Rexes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you really have to just determine what you think is art and then curate it, get things together that you actually like and that actually moves you. My rule of thumb is if you can look at a piece of art every day and be happy with it, just like a mate, if you can look at that mate every day and be happy with it, then that's definitely a keeper in my book. So um, that's my tip. My first tip actually is to, you can choose your own art. Don't let anybody tell you what to put on your wall. Some people say like, oh, put nature and an abstract and a portrait. First of all, they are full of stuff. Okay, because number one, I hate portraits. I am okay with like abstract portraits, but I do not like portraits. And maybe that's because I saw Ghostbusters 2 way too much as a child because I don't want some demon coming into my painting and possessing me. And this is just all in my head, people. Just don't listen to me if this is, doesn't make sense. But if this resonates with you, then you know what I'm talking about. I don't need to wake up in the middle of the night, have them go to the bathroom while some portrait keeps following me with their eyes all creepy and crazy. I don't need that in my life. So, but if you like portraits, then then bring that, bring it, bring it into your home. If you like, you know, nature pictures, then bring that into your home. Keep an eye out. My rule of thumb is this, if you walk by a piece of art and it actually makes you physically react, then that's the piece for you. If you walk by a piece of art and you like it, but you're not too keen on picking it up yet, walk away and then see if it, see if it keeps in your mind. If it stays in your mind, then go back and grab it. Yeah. So tip number two is choosing your frame sizing. This one I think actually creates the gallery wall per se because you want to create some interest to the eye. So that means that you want big frames um, with your art, you want small sizes, you know, rectangles, squares, um, sometimes circular, like if you want to put a mirror in there, I think that's really, it's a really good way to break up something. If you want to put like an object, let's just say for example, antler ears, I don't know. Um, but you could put that within your gallery wall too. So um, some really great retail options that I have found um, that actually uh, frame and map the picture for you. If you're shopping around and you're just like, oh, I just want to have it done for me, that's totally fine. Um, Society6 is a great option, Artfully Walls is a great option, and so is Artsy. Um, the only thing about Society6 is that they only offer black and white. Uh, so if you want to have you know, a black and white theme, all black frames, this is a great option. I really like the way their, um, their whole business model is where they actually support artists and they give the profits, a percentage of their profits to the actual artists. So I think that's really cool. Um, Artfully Walls will offer you know, different color frames, so if you want gold, black, white, silver, like they have that option. I haven't, I'm not really familiar with Artsy, um, but you know, hey, you never know. Uh, I do like Artfully Walls though, because like I said, they offer a variety of art and they also offer a variety of frames. So what's really cool, it's a really cool option that they have too, is you can actually build your gallery wall within their website. 
Um, so if you're looking at a picture and you're like, oh, you know, how's this gonna look? Well, then you can actually um, go onto this page. I'll, I'll link everything below, by the way, and um, build your gallery wall from there. So you can, there's a lot of different options that you can do for a, for frames. Just keep it interesting. You know, I like to mix black uh, with gold frames and brown frames. I think that creates a lot of interest to the eye and it kind of just um, keeps it a little bit of a warmth to their gallery wall. Uh, I actually have a tendency to put mirrors within my gallery walls that I create. So I think that having some interest to your gallery wall with the frames can actually um, bring your gallery wall to life in, in that regard. So last tip I have is actually placing your, your putting your gallery wall together basically. Um, I actually wrote a blog post about this quite a bit of months ago and um, I'll link that below just so you see the step-by-step -step visually of what you could do. But what I like to do is actually map out how I'm gonna put the, the pictures up on my, my wall. By doing that, I take everything that I, uh, that I collected and then I actually take some butcher paper um, and I trace the actual outline of the picture and the mirror or whatever I'm putting up on the wall, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just creating like a trace of it. So that way I can, um, next I can move it around on my floor and I can plan it around and if I don't like something, then I just pick it up and move the piece of paper. From there, I take some tape and then I will tape every piece of frame that I've outlined on my wall and see how it looks visually. If I'm okay with the actual format or uh, of, of the actual paintings, then um, I will go ahead and start putting them up. Um, but the reason why I like to put tape on the wall with a paper first is because it may look good on the floor that you where you planned it out, but it may not look so good up on your wall. You know what I'm saying? So um, this is a great way for you to just move the pieces around. That way you don't create a bunch of holes in your wall and you actually are a, um, you actually are creating like your plan. It's, it's, it's like a blueprint for a gallery wall. Um, I just think that's an easier step for you to do versus like nailing a bunch of holes in your wall and all the good stuff too. And if you're afraid about um, actually putting holes in your wall, then I can recommend the command strips. Those are super easy. Now they've just come out with so much, so many options for you to do with you don't have even have to put like a hook or anything like that. You just like basically tape it on your wall and you're good to go. All right, that is all I have for you today. These are just some quick tips on how to create a gallery wall and how to choose your art for it. Remember what I said though, don't let anybody tell you what to do as far as picking out what to put on your wall. There are no rules, okay? There's no rules about art. There's no rules about what to put on your wall. Unless you're asking me and asking me to take over, then that's a different story. But if you're choosing the art, then there's no need to listen to anybody saying you need nature, abstract, um, portrait, black and white. Like, no, like that's, this is you. This is your opportunity to be creative with your, with your space, okay? So again, just, just, listen to within and um, go from there. If something moves you, pick it up. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed this information that I've given you today and um, please feel free to leave me a comment and see if you know if you have any questions about the information I've given you. I'd love to hear from you. Once again, if you are not subscribed to my channel, please do so. And um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Also, I, I just put a bunch of like pointers on there. Uh, updates, things like that. You know, it's Instagram, right? Um, um, another thing too is if you want to look and check my free design guide out, I have that linked below. And that's just a really cool step-by-step -step process that I do as a designer um, on, on how I actually start the process of designing a space. So please feel free to check that out. I'll link that below. And um, until then, like I always say, please practice appreciation and gratitude. I will see you all next week. Bye.